This is the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. This time around we're going to talk about the ICX and ISSU or in-service software upgrades on the ICX series platform. So ISSU in uh, this platform means that you have a stack architecture and we're going to upgrade these devices one at a time. So it doesn't mean in-service software upgrade per device, it means per stack. So what's going to happen when you run ISSU is that the devices in the stack are going to reload one at a time and it's going to wait for that device to come back up on the new version of code, synchronize the stack configuration, then move on to the next device. So it does one at a time. So it does take a long time or you know, quite a while to upgrade all the devices in the stack depending on how many you have. However, you know, it should be non-disruptive. Um, the thing to keep in mind here, two things. One is your stack needs to be closed loop. So you need to have a closed loop stack or else it will not start the upgrade process. Um, you can only do minor releases. So you can do patch releases. You cannot go from 8050 to 8060, but you can go, you know, 8050A to 8050C, for example. So within the same um, uh, major release, you can do, but not across major releases. Uh, the other thing is, it, you need to multi-home your devices, right? So in this particular picture, I have servers, I have uh, uplinks to my wiring closets or to my you know, upstream firewall, etc., uh, and storage arrays all dual homed with a, with a link aggregation. So this is important because even though it's ISSU, these switches are still gonna reload one at a time. So if you have any single home devices connected to these switches, when they reload, you're still going to suffer an outage for the for the single home devices on that switch. If we dual home them like this with a, with a link aggregation, then even if one switch goes down, the link aggregation continues to function with the second link till that switch comes back up, and then it continues on with both links. So, um, again, not ISSU per device, but ISSU per stack. So here I am on my uh, 7250 stack, um, and uh, we'll have a look at the stack actually before we start. So what you can see about this stack is I have three devices. So I have an active controller, I have standby, and then I have a member. So I have three devices. Um, I am locally on unit one right now, unit two and three are remote, everybody's in a ready state. Um, the high priority is belonging to device one, so it is uh, it is the normal active. Uh, if we look at the connections here, we have uh, a closed loop, right? So from one two three is connected to three two three, three two one is connected to two two three, and then two two one is connected to close the loop to one two one at the other side. Okay, so it's a closed loop stack. If it wasn't, um, we could not do an ISSU. It would refuse to do it. Um, we also see that my protocols are ready and it can fail over. So the standby is ready to go and we have a stack Mac. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna copy our, uh, our flash from the primary to the secondary. So flash, flash, secondary. So from primary to secondary. Uh, and so this will this will uh, copy it in all the units, right? So it's going to copy it from unit one to unit two and unit three concurrently. Okay, so that took a few minutes to complete, uh, and now we are going to copy the new code uh, into the primary flash, right? So we've copied what was in the primary to the secondary, and now we're going to copy uh, the uh, uh, new code into the primary. So We'll just specify my uh, FTP server here. Uh, we're going to do SPR08060A, so minor release to minor release, right? 
So as I said before, you can't go major to major, at least not today. So you couldn't go 8050 to 8060, for example. But you can go, in this case, we're going from 8060 to A060A with an ISSU. So again, this is going to take a few minutes. And it will synchronize. Uh, it'll copy to the primary of the uh, active. And then the active is going to synchronize that out to unit 2 and 3 when it's complete. OK, so we now have, uh, we've copied our primary con uh, flash to secondary. We've upgraded the primary flash with 8060A. Uh, and so now, uh, first let's show the sequence, show ISSU sequence. Uh, is going to tell me the sequence that they're going to be upgraded, right? So uh, what we're going to do first is upgrade the standby, right? So the standby uh, will become active. Then we're going to do the member. And last, we're going to do the active. So we're going to upgrade these two guys first. And lastly, we're going to do the active. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're done one at a time. And it will, you know, confirm that they're back up and running before it moves on to the next one. Uh, so to start this, we're going to do an ISSU uh, primary, because that's what we're, uh, we're upgrading. Uh, on error, reload, primary. There's a few options here, but... Oops, excuse me. Uh, and so what it gives you here is... Uh, so this is your check, right? This is the checklist. So is your topology a ring? Is it a closed loop stack? Yes, it is. Um, is the standby present? Yep, we have a standby. We have a, an active and a standby. The standby is ready for upgrade. Yes, it is. If it was, if any of these were no, then it would refuse. Um, the flash is not currently in, in progress. Um, there's no secure setup in progress. There's um, no um, uh, CB mode enabled, so it's not a, uh, a campus fabric. Um, ISSU is in progress or aborted. No, there's no election pending. There's no election in progress. Um, there is uh, no reload pending. There's not CP high CPU utilization. Uh, all units are in a ready state. Yes, they are. Um, the primary image is upgrade compatible. So again, this is you know minor image versus major. So yes, it's compatible. A start of config and running config are the same. Uh, no, so it's going to refuse to start that upgrade, right? So I have a different start of config and running config. So what I'm going to do is do a write memory here, and that's going to sync those. It's going to download them to the other devices. Um, and so let's see. So if I rerun that command, okay, so I don't have the asterisks anymore, right? Because you have to resolve those asterisks before it will do the upgrade. Uh, boot option present in the running config, no. <clears throat> and user config mode, no. So proceed with upgrade, yes. So it is now going to start this. And so um, the very th first thing it's going to do is do a reload of uh, device number two according to the sequence that we looked at prior. So you can see that the upgrade is starting right now. At any time, you can do a uh, show ISSU status to see where your ISSU sits. And so we see right now that unit number two is upgrading currently, uh, and it is now in a member state. Uh, if you'll remember, it was the uh, it was the standby. So it's now a member state, and it is upgrading, and we see number three and number one as upgrade pending. Okay, so it appears that uh, unit 2 is now complete, uh, and unit 3 and unit 1 are still upgrade pending. So um, after unit 2 is fully up and fully synchronized, um, 
then it will move on next to unit three. Okay, so unit two has now completed. Um, and we are right about to move on to uh, number three. So uh, right there we can see that the active controller switches over uh, and then what was the active controller unit one is now gonna reload. So if I look at the status here again, um, oh, it's just bumped me over to another console. Uh, we now see that unit 2 is now the active, right? So that was originally the standby, and it is now in the active role, and it is upgrading uh, unit number 1. So uh, assuming that all your devices are multi-homed, like we talked about in the beginning, there should not have been any outage at this point, right? Any single home devices are going to suffer an outage, but everything dual homed is not going to suffer any outage whatsoever. Um, so at this point, even though it looks much faster from your perspective, I am now at about 25, 26 minutes here. So there's nothing fast about this process, right? Um, ISSU takes a long time because it does one at a time, and it, you know, it waits until that device is fully synchronized before it moves on to the next. So this is, uh, you know, this is a timely thing to do, especially if you have 12 units in your stack, it's going to take a long time. However, you know, if you absolutely are in a mission critical environment where you can't have downtime, then, you know, the, the amount of time that this takes is, is somewhat irrelevant, um, you know, when compared to having an outage in your network. So we'll just wait until that third one now, uh, uh, is finished upgrading and then we'll have a look at the final product. Okay, so unit three is back up here. Uh, currently we see unit one as standby, unit two is active, unit three is member. Uh, and then we, um, so it's going to switch itself over. So it takes 60 seconds once that last device comes back up in order for it to take over again. So uh, we've got, it starts at 60 seconds up here, and then it's going to go 50 seconds, 40 seconds, 30, 20. Uh, when we get to zero, unit one, it will take over because it's the high priority. Unit two will get assigned standby. Unit three will be member. And then we'll see the complete um, part of the, the upgrade and it will exit the task. So here's the switch over. It actually switched my console over as well. Because as the active switches, my console switches to wherever the active is. Uh, and then we see that the upgrade is complete and then it exits the upgrade task. So we can now see we're back to unit one is active Unit 2 is standby, Unit 3 is member, everybody's ready, and uh, the protocols are ready and can fail over. So that's the completion of the upgrade. So that's it for ISSU. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.